Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 11, Projecting. In this chapter we will uh, learn how teams are assigned and um, how they are developed and uh, uh, assigned to the project. Then uh, we will talk about the project meetings to start the project. Then uh, what kind of the properties or characteristics uh, the team project needs in order to make uh, have an effective team. <coughs> also, we talk a little bit about the diversity and the ethical ethical behavior that uh, we need to have in the project management team. Also, we will talk about the source of the conflict and how we can resolve this uh, conflict. And uh, a little bit about the problem solving and the brainstorming uh, activities that uh, we need to do in the during the project. And uh, a little bit about the effective time management in the project team because diverse group, we have a lot of people working on the project, so we need to address how we can effectively manage our time. So, the first thing in the project is that once the project is established, we need to prepare the team. Uh, so, in the team, we are collecting, we are gathering a couple of uh, multiple people with different expertise. So we need to know what kind of the expertise uh, and skill set we need and how many of them. So we need to identify and assess the requirement for each kind of skill and expertise that we have and uh, when we need them. So one of the most difficult thing and most challenging part of the team is that when they can work on the project so uh, sometimes uh, for the smaller project we the, the number of the people that we have is limited so we can use them for entire project but for the larger project uh, we use the team whenever we need them so we cannot hold the team members for entire project that it takes for example five years or six years but for the project that takes a couple of weeks or a couple of months, we can have them for entire uh, project. As we said, the availability of the resources, especially in terms of the human resources, that's the greatest constraint that we have. So we have to make sure that whenever we need, we have the access to the human resource and the skill set that we need. Otherwise, the project is going to be uh, basically postponed or we will have a delay on the tasks. And uh, we can negotiate sometimes uh, if, you know, some we can talk and uh, make some flexibility or change in terms of the resources that we have or uh, change some, some of the assignment to some of the uh, tasks. So that's one of the available way that we have. And we need to try to keep the people, the team, as small as, as possible. So whenever the team be larger, the number of the problems, the issues is going to increase and it's going to be very difficult to handle. So it's better to stick to less number of the people rather than having large team. So the project development activity is a process that we try to collect uh, different uh, set of the skills. So it has four steps. The first step is forming, then we have the storming, and then we have the norming and performing. So these are the four steps that we need to uh, follow in the project development, and we are going to explain in each, each of these activities. The project forming is the first uh, step uh, or initial stage of the team development process which involves the uh, transition from individual to team members. So here uh, we get involved some of the individuals we, uh, that we, need, we think that expertise is needed for the project. Then the team members uh, they need to have uh, basically 
positive expectation uh, on this stage. The main activity of this uh, stage is that we will think and plan the work. So the number of the actual work is very little. And most of the time, um, the project manager needs to provide the direction and guideline how to accomplish the objective. So the people in, involved in this project, uh, they have, they may have a different understanding about the outcome of the project. So the project uh, leader or the project manager needs to clarify the direction to each of the individuals involved in the project. So they may ask a lot of questions about the what's the purpose of this project uh, and uh, who are who are the other people involved in the project and uh, this kind of question is going to be uh, basically it will be asked from the project managers and so project manager needs to clearly communicate uh, with the uh, team to clarify the objectives of the project and create a vision that uh, guide the team members to the provided objective of the project. Uh, the next stage of the project is the storming. So members start to apply their skills uh, on the jobs that they have assigned and then uh, basically we start seeing slow progress in the project actual work so so in this stage uh, people start working on the task or tasks that they have been assigned and then the progress is going to be very slow so at the beginning of the project they are very excited but uh, because they see the actual work they may have uh, they may become a little dissatisfied about the project because they are dependent on the project manager and so on so here is uh, it comes the project manager um, flexibility in terms of the guidance and the to tolerance that has uh, because we are going to see a lot of the conflict that emerge from the different employees uh, different uh, uh, staff of the project and then uh, we are going to have a less motivate less motivation from the staff and uh, they may work as an individual rather than working as a team so here in this step the project manager should be a little bit more flexible and uh, instead of giving direction uh, let them have uh, more flexibility to their team members so project manager needs to be less defensive and uh, uh, let the staff member or team member work individually uh, or have more flexibility on the project. So you can see the sense of the being a team in the level of the forming is higher than the storming and then the storming level they become less uh, you know they become less they have a less sense of the being a team so that's the graph that the, the ashes represents the next step is a norming stage that uh, here we see that the relations between the project members and the staff become settled down and uh, the conflicts are resolved so Team members can work more collaboratively together and even they can provide the feedback uh, to each other. So they have a, a trust to each other and the feeling of the team members. So they increase the productivity and the, as a result the progress, the actual progress of the project is going to increase. Also you can see that uh, the, the sense of the being team um, for all of the team members increases and it's a lot higher than the level of the stormy uh, stage of the storm. The next and the final stage is the performing stage. In this stage the team has a highly committed there is a high level of the work performance between the team members the communication between the teams is very open and uh, they are highly efficient in terms of the communication and they're doing the, the tasks that they have assigned 
So in this level, we see that the project manager has uh, full delegation uh, to the team members and uh, it ha the project manager is working as a mentor and uh, basically supports all the uh, <coughs> growth of the team members. Also, in this step, uh, we need to be very careful about the budget, schedule, and scope of the project. So here is the scope of the project, budget of the project, and the schedule of the project is very important that we have pay attention in the performing stage of the team development. As soon as the team members are, the team is developed, we need to have a project kickoff meeting or the project orientation. So this project meeting and the project orientation meeting should be held as soon as possible. And the main purpose of this project is uh, the introducing the project objective, the roles of the team members and their responsibility. And uh, it provides uh, opportunity that people, the team members can know each other better and uh, if they have any question or any con confusion about the project or their role and responsibility they can ask from the management of the, the from project manager uh, it's very good practice to describe the protocols and the plans that uh, basically the project manager is going to follow and the team members uh, need to follow these protocols. <clears throat> also, this is a very good time that uh, uh, all the team members uh, ask their question, doubt or confusion that they have about the project obje objective, their roles and responsibility. The figure on the right side shows example of the agendas and the topic that we are it can be discussed on the project kickoff of the project orientation so th these are the six main topics that can be discussed on the project kickoff like welcome and introduction that uh, everyone is going to introduce and then they are going to discuss about the project what what are the objective of the project the deadline the schedule and uh, basically the scope of the project then roles and responsibility and uh, <clears throat> at the end is going to be the comments that uh, how they are going to basically they are going to talk more about the question um, confusion and uh, other kind of the question that team members brought up to the meeting. It's very important that we understand the individuals that we have, they are working as a team, is more than just independent individuals. They are working together as a cooperatively to achieve some common objectives that has been defined in the project objectives. So they are not uh, individuals working together. They are working together as cooperatively they can comment on each other and, and get help from each other so that's the main purpose of the being a team so if you have any question any doubt uh, you can ask from uh, staff other staff members that they are working so the main purpose is uh, developing a effective team that uh, uh, they learn uh, some new skill through this project, they improve themselves by asking questions from other team members that they have. So it's very effective that, um, uh, you know, as a effective team members, you need to cooperate and uh, help other team members. <laughs> the teams that we have for each project, it may uh, be different than uh, other projects that you have worked or it may be a different from a project to project, organization to organization, but they have some common characteristic. They sh these characters are, um, first of all, they need to have a clear understanding about the project. So we should know where are the objectives that we want to achieve then it should have be a clear expectation of each person, each team members that is involved in the team. So we 
the person should know uh, the role and the responsibility of the person and uh, it should be result oriented so all the team members they want to achieve the result and objective objectives of the project and it should be a high degree of the cooperation and the collaboration between the team members and the project manager so all team members they need to cooperate and collaboratively work together they need uh, to help each other and uh, to improve each individual and then the, the team members they need to have a high level of the trust to each member of the project so they can share the information and uh, they try to improve themselves there are some tools to evaluate the project team effectiveness uh, uh, one of the tools that we have is a checklist that you can fill out and measure how effective is the project uh, effectiveness or project team effectiveness so this is one example that you can uh, answer and measure how effective is the team that working on that project it's very important that we know that the team building is an ongoing process uh, it's very difficult to organize a group of people that they are coming from different opinion different perspective and like experience and uh, put them together as a team members so it takes time and uh, is an ongoing process it's uh, both project manager and team members are responsible to make a effective team uh, you know the team members uh, they need to know each other in order to have a basically effective team communication or effective team work there is a higher chance that uh, if they have a social activity together like an after work party is a very good practice that uh, team members know each other and uh, uh, as a result they become a friend and uh, they are going to be more productive on the project so having this kind of social activities after work is very recommended another practice that can happen is having a meeting on the project uh, having a meeting on the just team work that means the meeting just addresses the issues about the teamwork for example we address what how well is doing in terms of the teamwork what are the uh, barriers that impede the teamwork and uh, how can we do overcome over those barriers and so on so the main purpose is just improving and the teamwork so this teamworks this meeting, the main purpose of these meetings is identifying the issues of the teamwork and resolving those issues. It's common that the people that working as a team, they may come from different background, different race, racial, ethnic or cultural background. So the diverse background, the, the diverse work, in the diverse workplace, we need to acknowledge and understand and value the di the differences that the team members they have and uh, uh, this diversity can bring some uh, benefits to the project however the differences also sometimes can uh, create problems or barriers to the performance of the team uh, first the first issue is the miscommunication or misunderstanding because of the different uh, background and culture. Also, uh, sometimes it can bring the uh, mistrust or diminishing trust between the team members and uh, as a result we will have a low, lower productivity between the team members. Also, it can be very serious problem if we do not manage it properly but if we do manage it properly we can have a very creative and a lot um, basically faster result and a higher quality because people they are the team members are coming from different background and they have a different experience as a result they may have a better or different thinking style, out-of-box thinking and um, 
uh, out of box idea so we can have a more creative and faster result and higher quality of uh, web result. A good project manager must be very careful when uh, dealing with a diverse project team. So there are a number of things that a good project manager should do and uh, there are some other things that uh, should never do. So here we discuss this element. First of all, uh, the project manager never stereotype or make assumptions. So the project manager need to un needs to understand that every person is unique and should be treated different uh, as a unique person. So the project manager should not make assumption about a group or ethnic group and uh, make assumption that every person is the same. Also, the, the project manager should not exclude team members or have a have lower expectation from any group. So, should everyone should be expected to perform at the high level. Uh, it doesn't matter what's their background. So, every team member should also be uh, should feel that, that they are included in the project. The next one should uh, the project manager should not draw attention to the diversity. That means it's not fair or it's going to make uncomfortable team members by drawing attention to things that make them different from other groups. So we never brought up those kind of issues that team members make team members different from other group of team. Also, the project manager shouldn't make any insensitive remarks. However, the project manager should uh, the should follow some of the these uh, practices. First of all, the project manager need to take any whatever step that is necessary to create a supportive and positive climate for the diversity. So, make sure that there is a diverse and everyone is welcome. And um, the project manager can have a, a written diversity policy and uh, provide a diversity training to all the members that uh, they can uh, follow this procedure and uh, there are other uh, basically uh, procedures guidelines that the project manager and team members to need to follow in order to have a well diverse team members that they are working effectively and collaborating most of the uh, business people they prefer to work people that they are ethical and uh, they can trust them. Example of unethical behavior could be uh, you know reporting the timelines or working hours uh, to in order to they falsify this card time card reporting in order to get a higher income or they falsify the travel expenses that they have or they plagiarize the work that are done by other people and so on. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities that uh, for the unethical behaviors. So the project manager need to be aware of this and uh, make uh, sure that uh, there are some procedure to prevent happening this unethical behaviors. It could be by developing a policies on the unethical behaviors and uh, conduct some training that uh, people or team members know which one is ethical and which one is not and provide some process that uh, every team members can report any unethical behaviors that uh, they can observe so these are the practices that we need to take in order to make sure all the activities that we are doing as a team members are ethical and um, ethical behavior is going to result in the uh, sustainable project or sustainable business. That means we are going to do, if we do this project ethically next time, there is a higher chance that we get the project and uh, work on this project this kind of project one more time.
There are some principles and guidelines for the ethical. First of all, we need to treat others the way that we want to be treated. So this is the first guideline. And then the second guideline says that uh, we don't do anything that uh, uh, our family or friends and our co-workers read about the it on the newspapers or hear it from the news. So we have to be very careful about the, these two guidelines and try to apply in all the business that we have. The conflict can happen, can happen in different areas or it can have different sources. It can happen for the work scope. So one person has a different opinion about the tasks that they have uh, to do and the other person has a different opinion. Resource assignment or schedule, also it can be a source of the conflict. Other source of the conflicts are the cost, priority of the task, and the organizational issue, and so on. To resolve the conflict, we have several ways. Uh, the first one is uh, avoiding or the withdrawing the conflict. That means we temporarily ignore the conflict. Uh, it's this is not the efficient way because the conflict is going to show up later and uh, is going to escalate and it's going to be worse the second time it comes back. The second strategy that we have is competing or the forcing. In this approach, uh, conflict is um, seen as a win-lose situation. So one uh, party try to win, the other party is going to uh, lose. So this is a, a not efficient way to resolve the conflict. The next one is accommodation or smoothing which uh, uh, in this approach we try to find areas of ag agreement that uh, we have and uh, we minimize the uh, differences. So you know, the topics that uh, may hurt the feelings are uh, we don't discuss this. So, again, uh, here the, we are not just resolving the issue, so it doesn't help. The next way is uh, compromising. So, team members to tr try to find an uh, intermediate position. Uh, this may not, uh, still, this is may not completely solve the problem. The next one is uh, collaborating, confronting, and the problem solving. So here is the best way. Uh, they try to come up with a win-win outcome, and uh, the main discussion is going to be outcome. Uh, uh, try to both parties have a win-win situation. Also, they will have a they will keep the relation between the individual. So this is a very, very uh, optimal scenario that we try to find the best way that we can resolve the issue. The problem solving is a, a disciplined, creative and effective way that we use to solve the problems. That uh, this nine approach that we have uh, they generally help to resolve the issues. The first step is uh, developing the statement, the problem statement. That is, we basically say what is the problem that we are trying to resolve. Then we identify the potential cause of the problem, cause or causes of the problem. So what are the sources they have created this problem? We identify those. Uh, sources. Then we find and gather the data about the cause of this project. So this data collection is uh, can happen through asking questions. We can ask. We can interview people, and uh, we can read the reports of the project, and so on. So this is uh, these are the possible way to gather the data. Once we have a data, we try to identify the possible solution to resolve the issue or the problem that we have. So this is a creative step in the problem solving. So team members need to be very careful, just uh, try to not launch uh, 
or start the first solution that they it has been suggested to the problem so they need to be very open-minded and try to have multiple solutions and then in the next step they evaluate the uh, alternative solution so they find for each of the solution they find in the fourth step they try to see which one is the best and then at the end uh, they come up with the best solution that they, they have so they determine what's the best solution and then based on the, this solution they resolve the project plan so uh, we need to update the uh, project plan and then uh, implement the solution that we found and then uh, we have to investigate whether this, uh, this application this solution that we applied to resolve the problem is really solve the problem or just uh, so we have to gather data and see whether the problem is resolved or not so that's the last step in the problem solving one of the creative way that we use to resolve the problem or to solve the brainstorming is a method that uh, people sit in a room and they uh, they gather in a room and they uh, basically state their ideas or the solution that they think that it can resolve the problem. Uh, here, in this process of the brainstorming, uh, we do not discuss any idea. We just state this idea and we record this idea. So someone in the room is responsible to write down or record all the uh, ideas that uh, people or experts in the room bring up and then uh, there is two rules that we need to follow first of all we don't discuss any of this idea just the purpose is collecting as many as possible ideas to resolve the issue and then there is no judgmental comments on the idea so the comments we just the purpose of this brainstorming brainstorming is that we develop as many as possible ideas to resolve the issues once the the, the meeting ends when no one can uh, basically provide any new idea then uh, at the end of the meeting uh, at the, another meeting we can evaluate this uh, basically uh, basically this idea of the experts and evaluate and find the best way in the, the way that we did in the problem solving basically we evaluate each of these ideas and then we determine the best of the ideas that the people or experts in the brainstorming brainstorming they provide the next topic that we have is a time management the, the time that uh, because of the nature of the project, uh, the time is limited, so we have to consider some guidelines uh, that uh, make sure we have very effective time management. Uh, the first, uh, the first thing is that uh, the first practice that we uh, is suggested is at the end of each week. Uh, we need to identify goals uh, that uh, we need to do in the next week. So we basically break down the project goal into weekly ways and each week we follow those goals. And at the end of each day, uh, we make a to-do list for the next. So based on the progress on the project, we update the list, to-do list. So every day uh, the people need to follow the to-do list and, uh, and keep all the day working on those uh, so if there is any interruption uh, then we can uh, basically update uh, uh, that uh, those to-do list also we need to spend the time on the activities that is related to the goal and we have to make sure that uh, we do email or 
paperwork are the most time consuming of course so we can do them at the end of the day that uh, we during the day we focus on the to the to do list and uh, we can make sure that uh, once we started any responding to emails we finish all them in the ones so that's the some suggestion that we can follow in order to have a effective time management so this is end of this tag this chapter and thank you